I tend to be quite stubborn when I work and I really get stuck in my ways in terms of the way I like to do something. So what I have to force myself to do every one or two years is take a look at something I do regularly and then take a look at some updates that have been added and then ask myself in all honesty, is there a better way, a more efficient way or a better way to do the task that you're doing right now? So with that being said, in this video, I wanna take a look at using console scenes in Studio One in place of either a save as or the versions system that was added in Studio One. Let's dive in. Okay, so I have just opened up a mix over here. This is an actual mix of something that I did. We need to make a decision in terms of whether we want to do a hardware recall or whether we want to go with the print tracks. The way that I work is anytime I use hardware on something, you can see over here, I immediately create a print track that is the same channel width and I set the input of the print track to the actual source track. And then it's just a matter of making sure that they're all in a group. And then when I, when I record my actual mix, I will also record the different tracks. Now, I used this session in another video recently. So we have already basically disabled the lead vocal track and we are listening now to the print track of that. So this is not needed anymore. But what I need to do really quickly is just do the same for anything else. So let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, okay, so we've got a kick track, and we've got a snare top, and in addition to that, we have a bass because I see a print track directly underneath. So I'm gonna select this one we will select this one and we will select this one. And instead of just hiding them, I'm just gonna right click and disable. So I'm gonna go, first of all, disable selected tracks. And then the next option, I'm going to hide the tracks. Now these ones are already routed to the exact same um, output in terms of if they're going to a bus or straight to the submix. So this session now will play exactly as it was when I left off. If I play anywhere from here. It'll start to get to Okay, so now we're ready to kind of conduct this test. So I'm going to open up my console, and in the bottom left, we have the option to choose scenes. Now we have a couple different options here, and we got visibility, volume, pan, mute, insert, sends, cumix, input controls. We have selected channels only. This gets confusing because you'll get mismatches if you only choose to, for example, I suppose if you wanted to try a different mix of just the drums, you could just select the drums and create a scene. It can get confusing, so I tend to leave this off. And then we have input channels and we have recall channel outputs. So things like your main outs or your listen bus or anything like that that you're listening to. So this is what I'm going to go with. And I can tell just from the actual name on the vocal, uh, on the actual audio events over here, we have version 1.2. So let's name this exactly what it is. This is mix v 1.2. We will go ahead and click OK. So now I have like saved a snapshot of this actual mixing. Now let's say that we got some notes from the client. We, we, we played them in the mix and they said, I love it, but the kick and snare need to come down uh, at least a couple dB. And then the bass, we actually want to hear more of that. So let's bring that up a little bit. Maybe we'll bring that up a couple dB. And then the lead vocal is a little bit loud. Let's bring this down. Okay. This says we have some automation. I think that's on the sense. We'll make sure that it's not on the volume. No, it looks like we're good. Okay. So now that we've made these tweaks, this now is going to become a different version. So this could be mix V 1.3 at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now within this same song, we have two versions of a mix, which I would usually do using a save as, or I would do it with using a version from within Studio One. If I used a versioning system, I would save a new version. I would choose whether it wants to be incremental, which is kind of like a save as, or non-incremental, which is kind of like a snapshot. And the way that versions work is instead of having a one song folder where you have potentially 10 different Studio One songs because you used save as, you only have one main song file that's in the folder. But in your history folder, so where all your backups and everything are, is that all of your different versions are there. Now there's some right click options where you can actually restore a version, then you can choose which version you want. So it's a way to stay, to keep your song file organized. But in this case, I'm not really looking to do anything about the folder structure with the finder or the explorer window. This is all about just, can I use the scenes for my different versions? 
So we are currently active on version 1.3, and we know that we made a couple tweaks. We made a tweak to all, basically just the levels, just to, just to see this kind of in action. This was up 2.3, and then we have our kick and our snare. We have a change of minus 1.8. Now, if I wanted to go back to version 1.2, I double click, and this is now loading the version 1.2 mix. We'll give this a moment, and we'll play. It'll start to get I'm going to switch to version 1.3. It's a little disjointed, and I think it's probably because it's unloading some plugins and reloading and readjusting the delay compensation, but this is not bad. This is usable. Now, the other cool thing is that, and I don't think I've covered this in a video, um, they made a couple different updates to the way that the console scenes work. And in version, or with the way that they work now, we can also, in addition to doing static changes, we can also do automation. So let's say that I decided to automate this track. Well, we've done an offset of minus one, but let's say now I decided to put this in touch mode and let's view the automation line uh, right over here, this one. And let's say I wanted to write some motivation. Okay, so I've just added some automation. We'll put this back into read mode. And then now this becomes a new mix. This becomes now mix V1.4. And we will click OK. And now we have a new mix from within here. And take a look at this automation. I'm going to zoom in here just for a moment. If I wanted to compare 1.3, I double click. I'm loading version 1.3 within the same song. It'll start to you. Or I can double click the V1.4, which has all my automation. The way that it used to work is that if you had automation, basically wherever the cursor was, whatever the static level was at that cursor position, that's what would actually get stored in the console scene. But we got this update, so this works really well now. So this for me, this is actually not too bad. And the benefit is that, let's say somebody said, you know what, I really like version 1.2, but I like what you did with 1.4 on the vocal or something like that. At that point, you could actually choose the selected channels only option to restore a certain element back to a previous mix. And then the rest of the elements, you could leave them alone. Just wanted to explore this workflow. Hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.